is another smaller group that believe that ideas are primary. Boy, this is part of the part. Ideas are primary. Now, what we read last time, uh, we distinguished four types of motion. Four, with respect to motion, we distinguished four things. What is uh, moved only? such as inanimate objects, rocks. What moves uh, by another and moves other things, such as my body, which is moved by the soul, but can move other things. What is self-moving, such as the soul, and uh, what is immovable, but it is the cause of all motion, uh, the intelligence. And we uh, had come to the point where they had said, uh, if everything was at rest and there was to be any motion, there would have to be some self-mover before there could be any other moving. Anything which is moved by another is dependent on something which is self-moving, ultimately. So there would have to be something self-moving, and that, that is the soul. The soul, being self-moving, would therefore be prior to uh, those things which are moved by another, such as bodies or those things which are only moved, such as inanimate objects, rocks. So, uh, these people were saying that the, the uh, soul comes into existence after the body, and in the Phaedo, for instance, we encounter the soul is the harmony, when the body is well-tuned, and this harmony comes about in the soul. And uh, the argument in the laws and in practice is to show that uh, the soul must be prior to the bodies, because the soul is defined as being that which moves itself, the self motive uh, and uh, when we consider the heavens and the solar system or movement of the stars, uh, they seem to be revolving in, uh, in an orderly fashion, in the same, revolution of the same, and therefore to manifest an intelligence and not mere uh, random motion. And if there is this intelligence in the heavens, then the heavens must themselves be guided as my body is guided in its motion. And if the heavens are guided in its motion in the way our bodies are guided in their motion, then the heavens must, there must be souls in the heavens. And these he calls gods. Uh, I think we were just at the point where we were bringing in the notion of <coughs> the motion imparted by the soul participating in intelligence. That was on page 45. And 
before I want to remind you of one other point, and that is that what's at stake in this question uh, is best seen in the laws uh, where, where Plato says that uh, anyone who does an impious act must either believe that there are no gods or that if there are gods that they do not care about such insignificant small matters as us or that if they do care about us that they could be bribed <laughs> and we must show this person first that there are gods and that is what this demonstration is leading up to the conclusion that there are gods and then chapter 14 will concern uh, that the gods care for all things, both the large and the small, and not just the large. And uh, therefore that they do care for us. And chapter 15 will concern uh, the demonstration that the gods are just and cannot be bribed to go along with unjust. So we're concluding this argument uh, on page 45. And at this point, could you read? Sir? We're and if, however, keep it down there. If, however, this intellect is essentially intellect, since Timaeus indicating that the essence of intellect is the same with its intellection, denocating that the essence of intellect is the same with its intellection, dominates it, denominates. Oh, denominates it divine, mm -hmm. for he says that soul receiving a divine intellect led an upright and wise life. If, therefore, this be the case, it is necessary that the whole world should be su suspended from its divinity and that motion indeed should be present to the universe from soul, but that its per perpetual permanency and sameness of subsistence should be derived from intellect, and that its one union, the conspir conspiration in, its sympathy, in it and sympathy, and its all perfect measure should originate from that unity, from which intellect is uniform, soul is one, every being is whole and perfect according to its own nature, and everything secondary together with perfection in its own proper nature participates of another more excellent peculiarity from an order which is always established above it. That's one sentence. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know how to write sentences. And Rod corrected us and said that it's not Timaeus, but Parmenides in the Greek. And that would fit with uh, Parmenides' poem where he says, for the same is to think and to be. For that which is corporeal, being alter motive... Um, we yeah. draw on that principle, but that's completely obvious to you, and that's why you can go ahead and then let's ask me. Well, yeah. I, I was wondering whether or not we were going to finish the paragraph. Uh, yeah, okay, okay, I just... That yeah, was I a paragraph of size line. Yeah, I was hoping I someone would say something. I think it's good to uh, go through the paragraph. Yeah. Go through that. Go, go. go no, no, I, I was thinking it was good to go through that line. I'll go through the line before you go through the paragraph. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we would be going from what we can see to what we can't see. <laughs> blind uh, jumping off into darkness. This uh, uh, I have a question. Hmm. Um, he says every being is whole and perfect according to its own nature. Now, what does Proclus include in being beings? Where's that? That's right before he's going to start reading again. Four. Right before four. Mm -hmm. 
You've got eight lines up from the bottom. It's always eight. <laughs> And your question is, what does Sabine include? Yeah. I think so previous. she's saying to its own nature. Uh -huh. I think previously we had seen that being in this translation includes beings, uh -huh. which includes bodies. So... Different but bodies have different natures. Are we talking only of human bodies? Page 41. Of all beings, therefore, it is necessary. And then he proceeds to make that division of the four kinds of four, uh, four classes, whether they are moved or Oh, okay, so that would be the nature. Uh -huh. and, uh, Whether it's self-moving or moved and... So I think every being would go back to that, would include all of those classes. Okay. I think so. Does anyone else have a different understanding of that? Um... Yeah, I can see that that could uh, be read that way. Uh -huh. Because those four classes that you mentioned, they're not whole and perfect. <coughs> it wouldn't make sense if that's uh, right. what comes after the end, secondaries. Yeah, wouldn't this be the immovables? The holes? The perfect, unaffected, unchanged? Yes, the problem is. The gods, in other words. Mm hmm. Well, it wouldn't make sense to say that rocks are whole and perfect. That's right. And everything secondary is uh, dependent. Rocks. <laughs> Well, they're talking about the model copy, model copy, right? The whole thing. Looking mm -hmm. to the one above. Mm -hmm. Then it must be on, this must be different then. must be on the level of being. Mm -hmm. What he has been dealing with above this is the perpetual permanency and sameness of uh, of subsistence observed in the universe. <coughs> and after he leaves whole soul like he runs through being mm -hmm. until he comes to soul mm -hmm. soul as a whole mm -hmm. and then he gets into partial souls mm -hmm. so if he is dealing with whole it's going to stop at the level of whole soul I think. Mm -hmm. yeah soul is one it says right there. 
Well, when it's when it's fully named in the source, you know, as he talks to the it rules over all things. That's whole soul for him, which is the last uh, conclusion of the second hypothesis. Um, when, it, when he talks about it, um, participates in time. But we'll get to, that'll come up. Uh, I want to go back to this. If, therefore, this be the case, it is necessary that the whole world should be suspended from its divinity, and that motion, indeed, should be present to the universe from soul. Uh, in so far as things are, there is motion observed, uh, that is present from soul. Mm -hmm. We also notice a perpetual permanency, especially in the sphere of fixed stars. But is this here is talking. And here, are we talking about the soul's perpetual permanency? I. Uh, because you're not talking about stars. Uh, coming from the intellect, right? No, but the perpetual permanency of their pattern of motion, uh, that they they stay in their constellations and don't move about. Uh, but I mean, if we're going to build this thing and one suspends from the other, and and soul is suspended below intellect, mm -hmm. and then the universe is suspended below soul, mm -hmm. then soul has got to be the agent between intellect and the universe. Right. Mm -hmm. right. <coughs> so there must be a soul that guides the motion of the universe. Yeah. And if soul is concerned with the motion of all of the universe, then each of the parts of the universe must be in soul. Yeah. And uh, uh, they go into this in detail in the laws. Uh, and the fact that we can see uh, intellig intelligible order in the universe uh, perpetual permanency, we can see that the soul that guides the universe must partake of uh, intelligence. So we see intelligence twice removed. Huh? And <coughs> I'm not sure what to make of this sameness of subsistence. What's the it's? Where's it going? Yeah, that was the previous question. I huh? it was the same that question. The that motion, question. I think, goes back to that motion. A motion that is derived from the intellect? The quality of the motion, I think. <coughs> hmm? Whatever it is, something that comes from the intellect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it comes from the intellect. Well, there are a couple of candidates for that. Whole world, right, and that's soul. Mm -hmm. What was the other candidate? Motion. 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 Uh -huh. It's present from soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that kind of rules that one out. Huh? Yeah. Well then, uh, soul's perpetual permanency and sameness of subsistence yeah. should be derived from intellect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Otherwise, it's not going to fit. You know, the model isn't going to fit. It's not going to go intellect, soul, universe, unless that's the case. Uh, so the one is not suspended above the other. The world uh, gets its motion from soul. The soul derives its perpetual permanency and sameness of subsistence by from the intellect. Mm -hmm. And intellect, where's this line? Up there. And that it's one union, the conspiration in it, and sympathy, and it's all perfect measure should originate from that unity from which intellect is uniform. Yeah, that, you know, back to that unity again. I believe here we have the Henads. in between the one and uh, intellect. And uh, if I've been following this right, I believe that when he talks to that unity, he's going to the uh, he where did the heathens come from? <laughs> there, there are a middle term between the one and the intelligence. Is that the Greek word or what? Yeah, it's a Greek word, yeah. Have we it read just that? means ones. Ones. The hypoxis of the intellect. Ones. And you get more about about that <coughs> in things like the elements of theology. No, you get more of that in book three. Well, yeah. as well. Yeah. Ones. But we get a full discussion. Remember, uh, one time when we talked, we said that in between, our, that Plotinus had distinguished one, intelligence and being, and soul. That uh, Proclus thought there should be a middle term between one and intelligence and being, which is... Uh, higher than intelligence and more like the one uh, ones he knows. and there should be a middle term between intelligence and soul which we were saying is Lucia and we just got we just went through a whole discussion of the contrast between the sea and the tech on mm -hmm. the last two pages. Mm -hmm. Whether something has something essentially or by participation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he uses it in a couple of ways. He uses it. The last um, three pages. <coughs> uh, I I had previously understood he adds to mean to mean unity. Unities. Is it unities or is it well one? if there's a if they're plural, yeah. Unities. Unities. Yeah. A he net is a is a unity. Okay, and how does this relate to a one now? There are middle term between the one and intelligent. So you see that that's very likely to be true, but how can you use how can we see that? unpack this? Yeah. So we're dealing with this word. Uh, can I suggest why don't you just yeah. read it? Why don't you read it through and get your order as it emerges? <coughs> yeah. Right? Just structure it out as it comes. Mm -hmm. Now we know the word essential and essence is going to come out of see it. Mm -hmm. So just mark that in the text and watch what develops. Do you have a semicolon after a divine semicolon? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. 
Well, it does. Schematically incomplete. Yeah, it could very well be, but uh, I think he's making a point there. The world's incomplete. Well, it's a supposition. See, here, did you want to help? Want to help? Yeah. Want to help? Okay. Let's just take the sentence of Pusher. All right? All right. Write yeah. down. All right? Here we go. Come here. If, however... That's a good way to start. Yeah. <laughs> this intellect is essentially intellect. Ah, okay. So how are you? Certain kind, all right? Now, we're interested in this strange word. Yeah. <coughs> We just got a contrast right. that word with participation. Let's push it. Right. Let's push it. Right now, it's this kind. This is, we know what this means. What does this mean? That's what he's telling us. Mm -hmm. The way he's using it here is that it's 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 like you can't go out of the house without your head, but you can go out of the house without your hat. Intellect cannot be divorced. It's it, like this is essentially intellect. Soul has intellect by participation, not essentially. That's the contrast he's making. Perhaps that's well. Right. That's right. Perhaps on page that's 44 in the middle. I'm sure it is. But now we're on 45 in the paragraph. Let's do it again. Go ahead. Oh, okay. if you want to see how we use? I just thought I'd share no. that. Yeah. No. No. If you want to go through those, right? We can see in order. That should become clear. Let's try. Come. If, however, this intellect is essentially intellect, right? Right. Since Parmenides indicates that the essence of intellect. Okay. Look at. All right. Here we have it again. The essence of this. Mm -hmm. right. You see an intellect, the essence mm -hmm. of this. Go ahead. Go ahead. Is the same with its intellection. Right. With its intellection. With its action. Awesome. With its action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what this means. You see an intellect. It is its action. It's the act of the intellect. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying. That's it. You see an intellect. You have three terms. You have this thing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then you have the action of it. You see that quote here, you can't build on that because that's a misquote. This is coming out of the Parmenides, well, if you're interested in the text, this quote is coming out of the Parmenides for the thinking to be is the same. It doesn't say the essence there. It's not you see it. It's only you see it used one time in that section. Could very well be. Well, I'm no, dealing. It's, it's not could. Here's the Greek. I'm not dealing with the okay. Greek. I'm just dealing with the text. Well, but this text, and this then text we can cor complete and then we can correct the text, then we can go to the Greek and change it. Okay, first understand what's there. Right, want to understand what's there? No, I'm not interested in understanding what's there. Well, all right, come on, I push it one more step. Right. There is this, is there not? There's an action, and there's a result, isn't there not? Is there not? There's a result of it. All right. So read it, watch what he's saying, right? If you want to understand this, the seeing of this, the essence of it, mm -hmm. that's this, that's the action. Right? That's, now, that's not, it's not the point that's being made right here. Well, why don't you do it? Well, yeah, why well, don't you I, do it since you've interrupted it. four times? Well, please, try it. Well, come on. Let me turn back to page 44. Yeah. Well, look at the contrast between the tech on and the see Please, go right ahead. Come on, get up here and do it. Um, I can do it right here. Well, it'd be much easier up here to chalk. But it's, it's reading. Well, fine, we'd like to read it. Why don't you do it? I, I can Instead do it right of back here. there, just like the people, come on, you can sing back there, do it. I can read it right here, too. Thanks an invitation. Not an invitation. You've made it as such. Well, Go ahead. Jump I'm in. point. It's in the middle of the page, almost, where it says Theophrastus. Do you see that? On well, the right-hand side, about almost halfway down the page. Does everybody have that mm -hmm. on page 44? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, it says Theophrastus somewhere says, if this be the case, whether does it possess this intellectual, perfect, and beneficent power, according to participation, or according to essence. Okay, that word usia. For if according to usia, essence, it is necessary that every soul should be of this kind. 
since each according to its own nature is self-motive. But if according to participation, there will be another intellect subsisting in energy more ancient than soul, which essentially possesses intellection. Now, the point I see there, he's making a contrast between whether or not something has something by essence or by participation. And uh, he follows up. There's three more uses of the C on this page until he gets to the quote we're just on right now. So it strikes me that the point that's being made there, it's like I said initially, it's like you being a human being, you can't go out of the house without your head. That's by essence. Right? By essence. It's, you know, it's fundamental to you as a human being. It's not by participation, like wearing a hat. That's the way he's using the term. And the quote from Parmenides is, it's, uh, it doesn't have Lucy in it, as the translation suggests, but it says, for the thinking to be of the same. <coughs> so, you look at the text. So I don't see that he's making a point there that you see is how something functions, but that it's an intrinsic uh, property by virtue of which something is what it is, and without that, it, it or divorced from that, it is not that thing. That's the only point I'm seeing following the reason, reading of the text. Struck me, strikes me that that's the point of the argument. Is have a point of view. Now, why don't you push that in the paragraph on page 45 and render that paragraph intelligible? Right, that's the test of it. Well, I think the point I just made in my own mind is that when he uses here now the word essentially, if however this intellect is essentially intellect, the point has been made in my own mind that it's not by participation that it's fundamental and intrinsic to it. It's that by virtue of which it is what it is, and if you take that away from it, it won't be that. Uh, I think the points are made. Now, if you don't, I'd be happy to hear how you see that. If you're interested in my working through this paragraph, right, which I just have the English here, I can show you what it means. Now, if, upon reflection from the Greek, we can improve upon this translation, I obviously would say, let's do it together. If, when you look at this, and if I make some slip somewhere else, I would appreciate it from anybody to point it out. I don't see, yeah, Rod, I don't see, as I look at this, that you've contributed well, now that's probably because that. no, what? <laughs> I don't think it that way. I'm well, telling you, a lack on my part. There. No, I, I tell you, it's a lack on my part. Uh, I'm saying, as I read this, you introduce something. It's very likely you have a good one. I'm just saying that, as far as I can see, I don't see how it could be utilized. What about the, the, the right. argument, though, that leads up to this, that makes the contrast about things having something essentially about right participation? Is that relevant? Yeah, okay. It may be perfectly relevant. No, if change. it's not, it, it may be. Of course it's relevant. Okay, good. Of course it's relevant. Now, let's proceed did, I, did I do anything different so far that well, you would like to take exception to? Well, you're going to make a point about that you see is how something functions. I'm saying that's I'm not... Where, where, I'm, well, I'm saying the, when the word you mm -hmm. see in, the intellect is being used. The way it's described in that text is the act of the intellect. That's just what I said. That's why I wrote it instead of using the word intellection. Where's that quote? Where can we make that? Point? On page four. Second line. It's the same with this intellection. Yeah, yeah, because that doesn't make sense. Doesn't make it doesn't make sense. It's the same with the genius. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. That's right. So intellection. 
same and action are the same things or different things? Well, how do you read? The action of something is, the, is different than the same in this of something? Or? I don't understand that point. That the essence of intellect is the same with its intellection. Yeah, we've, we've yeah, understood in the that? past that essence was. Why would we say that's an idea? Like that, have we? <laughs> essence and function? No. If you just stay with the, if you just stay with that sentence, let's say, what happened to your good friend Ken? Yeah. Read it, will you please? Start it off. If, however, this intellect is essentially intellect, then we're going to learn something about it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Since Parmenides indicates that the essence of intellect is the same with its intellection. It's the same with its intellection, with its activity. Denominating it, denominates that's it divine. That okay. moment, that's divine. Look here. Would you not agree from what we know in the realm of oh, intellect? Okay. There's an interesting state of mind that occurs. And that is, when the intellect is exercising itself, it sees itself. Mm -hmm. That makes it, look here. The act, there isn't any difference at that moment between the intellect, right. its activity, and the object, since it's encountering itself. That pulls it together. The presupposition of these three working together in it is a unity. That is a unity. The three working together. That's a unity. He's, that denotes it divine. Hmm. That's his term, right? That as one. That's divine. Somebody say? Mm -hmm. Okay, read it again. Start it up. If, however, this intellect is essentially intellect, not essential. then, uh, since Parmenides is indicating that the essence of intellect is the same with its intellection, denominates it divine. Right. Sorry? Is that the divine? put it in there. It is not the it divine. That's yeah. its conclusion from that phrase. Mm -hmm. Right? There it is. Bang. First conclusion. Mm -hmm. He's calling that kind of activity. That's divine. Okay, we're saying the sentence goes, if our this intellect is essentially intellect, then we have a clause of modification. Mm -hmm. And then we have yep. PFD, he denominates it divine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Now, he's going to pick up this. Watch this. He's going to pick up this turn. All right, keep going. For he says that soul, next level, mm -hmm. receiving a divine intellect, Look, right, receiving divine intellect, divine intellect is just defined as functioning in this way, mm -hmm. led an upright and wise life. Right. Mm -hmm. That kind of activity in the soul brings out an a divine and wise life. Wise life. That's right. And this becomes important in subsequent argument as to whether <coughs> the soul of these kind of souls would be anything but upright and wise. Mm -hmm. uh, if, therefore, this be the case, it is necessary that the whole world should be suspended from its divinity and that motion indeed should be present to this universe from soul. Okay, let's go back. Right. Okay. If therefore this is the case, right? if you see it in one, if you see it in one, mm -hmm. he's saying, hey, you know what? You can see it in the whole. The same kind of drama is going to take place. It is necessary that the whole should be suspended from its divinity. Picking up again the same term, divine, a third time. Agree? Mm -hmm. We see the divine on the level of intellect, on the level of individual soul, and now we see it in terms of the whole universe. Mm -hmm. right. The same particular kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Right? And therefore, it's order. And that motion indeed should be pre present to this universe from soul, but that its perpetual permanency and sameness of subsistence. Look. This is the same. This is the same. This is the permanency. Mm -hmm. Because when intellect functions and encounters itself, mm -hmm. that's a permanent. That's a, that's no change. 
no change. Yet there's an activity. It's permanent. It's perpetual permanency. Keep the word perpetual. Mm -hmm. This activity is unceasing. Mm -hmm. And sameness of, of subsistence should be derived from intellect. And that it's one union, the conspiration in it and sympathy, and it's all perfect measure should originate from that unity from which intellect is uniform. Okay, so I'm going to pick it up from the bud again. But it's perpetual permanency, that's going on continuously, and sameness of subsistence should be derived from intellect. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm back on the word it's. Remember, we would have Yeah, that was the question, where did yeah, that, that go to? That's, we said it should be sold. That's so. Yeah. Because these things for him, when they function, in, right. when they function in the world soul, right. that's its key, and its key manifests itself right here. Um, it's dependent. Yeah. Or put it another way: if therefore that this be the case, it is necessary that the whole world should be suspended from its divinity, and that motion indeed should be present to this universe from soul. All right. When, uh, when this activity is present in the individual, he says at other places, this is when, you, when one thinks about oneself as a thinking thing, that's a mirror of this, on, of pure intellect. When you think, when you are thinking about yourself, you're using your thinking capacity to think about your thinking is taking on the same characteristics on a higher level that intellect in intellecting itself is. That's Usiya. That's Usiya descending on the level of individual person. Now what's interesting about that, that's a, that's a motion. See, motion derives from this, from Usiya. That's the origin of motion. Because that's perpetual motion. Oh, so it's the same. And it doesn't change. It doesn't change. Yeah. And that it's, see, now I'm, I'm back on this one line. But that it's perpetual permanency and sameness of subsistence should be derived from the intellect. That's a first. And that it's one union, the uh, conspiration and in it and sympathy. And it's all perfect measure should originate from that unity. Okay. This is very compact. So therefore, let's stay there. Look at uh, And that it's one union. The union of what? This is a union. This is also, if this is a union, it is also a union, uh, a unity is a measure. It's a measure. It delimits. It measures. Unity is a measure. Anything, anytime you say anything is unity, it's a measure. It circumscribes it. Isn't there also uh, unity of the whole world uh, in measure? And it derives from this unity. From this unity. From this unity. Mm -hmm. See, wherever, here's a principle all right, that runs through his whole system. Whatever, whatever principle can be presupposed in an activity belongs in the class of which it is a member. Mm -hmm. All right, that's a, that's a principle. Therefore, if you say that what is presupposed in the operation of the intellect, intellecting itself, then that presupposes a unity, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Or it couldn't function. Therefore, unity belongs in the higher class of intellect. Mm -hmm. The class of unity, unity as a class, has members. One of the, its members then are that that particular kind of unity that is present when intellect intellects itself. Mm -hmm. 
that's one member of the class of units. That's right. Is a class of that's right. That's the he now. That's the he now. That's it. That's it. In any, and when you have any series which you can put in the same class, the qualities that reside in each, the common quality, the central common quality in each of them, or the condition for its being in that class, belongs to the class itself and not to the members. It belongs to the class primitively. Mm -hmm. This basic principle runs through. Well, is that an ascending essence? That's an ascending. That's ascending. Descending. Ascending essence? Yeah, that's what it's doing. It can go either way. It can go either way. It can go down. See? And that it's one union, the conspiration in it, and sympathy, and it's all perfect measure, should it originates from that unity. Right? Originates from that unity. Mm -hmm. Because in the class of unity, in the class of unity, one thing you have to have, and not only do you have intellect and these things, you also have measure. Mm -hmm. Concept of measure. If that originates from unity, from which intellect is, from which unity is intellect, soul is one, every being whole, perfect, according to its own nature, and every everything secondary, together with its perfection of its own nature, participates of another more excellent peculiarity. You know what it always is? The order which is above it. Mm -hmm. The order which is above it. So you have a, you have a series. Theoretically, we should take, we should be able to take calculus and do this. We should have a series, right? Then we have a class. Then this itself becomes a member, etc. Right. Right. And what he's developing is a philosophical language to talk about how you can talk about that. And then he has this. And the relationship here. between. Them. Then he has that, right? Then he has this. That's the top. How do and that's your seal. Yeah. How do you walk? That's your seal. And so, so it stops on the level of, of uh, so reflection. Yeah. All that's in that one wonderful sentence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which now leads up to being able to understand. To now he's going to apply it. Yeah. Let's try. Look at. I'm going to stay in there for a moment. Okay. Watch it. Okay. See whether we can do it. This whole thing. This whole thing is anchored in that last part, is it not? Uh, mm -hmm. All of this from an order which is always established above it. Mm -hmm. What? A more excellent peculiarity. A participation. Participates of a more excellent. That's right. Always a higher order, always established above it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what he's going to have is a uh, mind operating operating in uh, bodies, in body, all right? Mind as it were operating, all right? Uh, now, notice I'm using the modern sense of this, all right? Because that's what we would, we would mean psyche, like in the word psychology. The psyche operating in a body, right. the psyche, the, the class of psyches, and right. the class of psyches, the principal element through the whole thing is what we would call mind or intellect. Right. That presupposes unities. Right? Unities, unities are gods, or God are gods. God, for, for uh, Proclus, remember, is not only unities, it's also basic principles of this whole order. That's what he's going to call God. No, he's going to call it the one. Yes, the two things, Rob. The idea of God is one as well as the unities. No, they're uh, gods. Pardon? They would be gods. Right? Yeah, that's right, gods. That's what I said. Both. Capital. Yeah, that's right. One. That's right. Way up here. 
and gods, right? Unity is gods. That's the order, you know. And the dynamic that runs through them is this curious word, who sin. And that's why this word unity becomes important. Unity, union, unity, measure. So I'm on the last level. And every being is whole and perfect according to its own nature. And every second and everything secondary together with the perfection of its own proper nature participates in the higher. All right, here we go. Right. Uh, another word for this, remember, this is the realm of being. Often should be spelled with a capital B. Right. This is another word for soul. So these two presuppose in a higher realm, right? Every being and everything secondary, together with its perfection of its own proper nature, participates in a higher. Right? That higher is going to be the unity that he just described. These two taken together. Right? He'll often take pairs. And that's why he pairs those at that point. Where does it come from? Uh, from that, all perfect measure should originate from that unity. See how he's writing? Mm-hmm. Back to work. Yeah. Oh, back to work. <laughs> <laughs> Got that sentence done. Well, well, there are there are a couple of rough spots in the fight. First of all, first of all, there's no complete set sentences. Well, these are two different punctuations these days in dealing. Oh, I suspect you're absolutely right. There's no, if you say if, then you have to have a then, and there's no then. Yeah. The clause that starts with since to the semicolon is a uh, unit within itself. Yeah, I would put a then where I, I voiced it. Uh, well, if you put since Parmenides indicating that the essence of intercourt, intellect is the same with its intellection, uh, you need that last part that denominates it uh, divine. As I would say that's clause. where I put that denominates it. Then that clause, since Parmenides uh, indicating that the essence of intellect is the same as intellection, is then not grammatical. It would be grammatical if you use that simple uh, verb denominate with that clause, but you won't have the uh, second part of that if then clause. Then. I don't then think the then comes until if therefore this be the case. Yeah, okay, I'll do it again. I think at that point the word do he knows it divine, I put that. Okay, so you'll that take denominates it as divine. So you'll take since to intellection, we could, we could remove that for a moment to examine the structure. And we could say, if however this intellect is essentially intellect, that denominates it divine. Or another way we could say, uh, that this intellect is ins- essentially intellect, it is divine, or it is denominated divine. I think that would just uh, still would solve the problem. Yeah, then you have a semicolon and another word clause. And if, therefore, this be the case, you can read it by ten. Semicolons don't denominate, uh, don't show subordinate clauses. Uh, yes, if there are more than one subordinate main clause, I mean, a group of main clauses that are separated by semicolon. But the next subordinate clause, where he says that that soul receiving the divine intellect must be somewhere way down here, that we get the final uh, proposition. Yeah, I think he, re- he goes so far as to repeat the if, if therefore this be the case. Which is? Uh, the fourth line. Yeah, I know, but what's the this? Um, what, all, all the other ifs. Of the well, line. it's the same with intellection, do you know, it's in divine. Mm-hmm. I think 
Well, if this be the case, that means that the essence of intellect is the same as its intellection. Would that be the case? It is necessary that the whole world, and that's the then clause, I think. Yeah. There you go. It is. I think the then clause is, it is necessary that the whole world should be descent, suspended from its divinity and that motion indeed should be present to the universe from soul, but that its perpetual permanency and sameness of subsistence should be derived from it. And it's uh, even conjunction that goes on. But I think that he, he's reiterating what he's reiterating about the if there. This is not a new if, it's the same if. So we haven't got the then from the first if clause, so way down the So yes. it is necessary that. That's not what you're saying. Huh? It's not what you're saying. I, I think that if therefore this be the case, the then clause starts with it is necessary that the whole world. What do you think of that? Well, I, um, I, I would say in terms of arguments, um, he's making a claim. I take the claim to be that the essence of intellect is the same as intellection. If that's the case, he's saying a whole set of things are necessary. Mm -hmm. He doesn't reveal that it is necessary or why it's necessary. That's a claim. Mm -hmm. That's a claim. He's saying, mm -hmm. if that's true, this, this, and this, and this will follow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking into that paragraph for grounds of why he would say that, why it's necessary, it's not in that paragraph. It's an I.O.U. Well, the sense would no, not He's apply. making a claim. It's a claim he's making. Well, the sense would show you why this intellect is essentially intellect. That's uh, modifying it. That's, uh, say, we say this since uh, Parmenides said that. Since Parmenides de de denominates it again. That's what that sense does. Mm -hmm. Since Parmenides denominates it divine, indicating that the essence of their life is the same with its intellection. Some things make more sense when I you structure them than that. they do when you read them in a line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you structure them, you don't follow what it said in the line, you're structuring a follow text. That's the problem. Each to the propositions you can look at and see, that's what we've been doing here, but mm -hmm. if uh, you can't find the supposition and propositions as they go through this, uh, the way this long sentence is laid out with its dividing punctuation, mm -hmm. then um, how do we know we follow the text? That's the important part. Well, doesn't it seem to you that it is a conclusion or a consequence of intellect being essentially intellect that it is necessary that the whole world should be suspended from its divinity. Yeah, plus all those other things. Yeah. Rather than yeah. Right. Can, can, can we not do this? So you're repeating the intellect is essential intellect. There's an assertion. There's, a, there's an assertion. That's right. Uh -huh. I'll put that as line two. Sorry. All right. Mm -hmm. Wait. Starting with the essence of <laughs> intellect is the same as the same mind. Mind. And uh, when he gets to line three, mm -hmm. right, that's an example of it. That's right, example. support it. 47. Right, that's supporting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Starting with that uh, 47. Before he says, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then he's saying, would you not agree? He's saying, given that, given this, yeah. there are two things you can say. Mm -hmm. given, right. given both of those above. A, Yes, A and B, with the qualification, but, yeah, all right? Then the but, right, qualifies it, but, but that is perpetual permanence of the drive right, from the intellect. One, right, and another independent. Right, and same as which would be drive from the intellect. Two, 
right? And that it's union, and then here's a parenthetical clause, from which intellect is uniform, soul is one, C, right? And then everything is whole perfect according to its own nature, and everything, everything is over that whole thing, every being. This whole and perfect according to its own nature, and everything is together with function. These two taken together, he then concludes. Yeah. Right? So can so if you go to okay, uh, then it will take it. is then is the sure. whole world and not the denominates of uh, divine. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, now he links back uh, this to that previous distinction between classes of things which are alter motive and things which are self motive. And Keep in mind that we're concerning the whole world. Yeah, keep going. I just want to make sure. And recall that we've already talked about. the motion coming from the soul, but now we're bringing in the participation in intelligence. And he's going to apply this now, starting with the word for. Oh, boy. Uh, He's busy. <laughs> busy. Okay, thank you for volunteering. We're starting with the word for. For that which is corporeal. Uh, for oh. that which is corporeal, being alter motive, derives from soul the Robert. representation of self motive power, and is through it an animal. I'm just take a quick cut. Uh, let's take that sentence. For that which is corporeal, I'm going to use as an example of the body, being alter motive, meaning moved by another, derives from the soul, representation of self motive power and through it is an animal so that that animals are self moving appear, appear to be self moving because they have derived this motion from soul. Uh, soul. Mm-hmm. soul is self-moving. Bodies are no. al- not not self-moving. Mm-hmm. Alter motives. So soul, intellect. Read the next line, please. But soul, being self-motive, participates of a life according to intellect, 
and energizing according to time, possesses a never ceasing energy and an ever vigilant life from its proximity to intellect. Previously, we had seen that the soul gives life to the body as well as motion. Soul is what animates us and makes us animals as opposed to uh, rocks. Uh, but soul gives life to the body, and now we see that it gets it by participation in intellect. And when it gives life, is it because of movement or because of intellect? Yeah. When soul it gives participates of a life according, according to intellect. So it's like because. Mm -hmm. uh, and energizing according to time, possessing a never ceasing energy, an ever vigilant life from its proximity to intellect. Uh, therefore, it passes it passes the life that it gets from intellect onto us, makes us alive, mm -hmm. um, animates us. Mm -hmm. Okay, go on. Okay, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. I was kind of confused. About, I don't know if we went over this a couple of weeks ago, more than here, but in earlier chapter. 11 talks about for the life of partial as well as of total souls is according to time. Mm -hmm. How does time fit in there in you know this passage right here? Energizing according to the time. Um. Because that's uh, energizing according to time. Uh. We had distinguished prior, and you might not have been here at the time we were discussing the four classes, that which uh, moves itself, mm -hmm. that which moves another, and is moved by another, and that which is only moved. And, above, and all of these are in time. Everything that's moved. Uh, uh, but the source of all motion and Light is above, is above time and eternal. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So soul is, is, its activity is in time. Mm -hmm. Intellect, its, its act is beyond time, it's eternal. And that's what he was saying here. Here's the activity of the soul in time. Here's the act of intellect in uh, uh, internal. So that, uh, go on. And intellect possessing its life in eternity, always subsisting essentially in energy, and fixing all its stable intellection at once in intellect, is entirely deific. Is that how you pronounce mm -hmm. that? Through the cause prior to itself. Now there is a cause prior to that. Now here we had talked about this unity, the higher, the, the hina. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Intellect is divine. It's, uh, and it has its life in eternity. It always subsists in energy or in uh, actuality, in act. And so it is entirely deific, divine. And how is it divine? Through its prior cause. Hmm. 
And the prior cause is unity. Oh, this, this yeah. Enet. Yeah, and that's a unification, this thing that's going on here. A uh, unification. Yeah. And the prior cause of unification is a unity. Mm -hmm. So, uh, go on. For it has twofold energies, as Plotinus says, some as intellect, but others as being inebriated with nectar. Jim's going to explain that to us now. Yes, that, that part. <laughs> I've always been in that second group. <laughs> <laughs> and elsewhere, he observes that this intellect, by that which is prior to itself, and is not intellect, is a god, in the same manner as soul, by its summit, which is above soul, is intellect, and as body, by the power which is prior to body, is soul. We saw earlier that body, by the power that is prior to it, is called an animal, and anima, you know, soul. <laughs> Soul is intellect by the power prior to it. Mm -hmm. Intellect is divine by the power prior to it. Each thing has the quality that it has comes from the higher order mm -hmm. above it. Well, where would the inebriated with nectar come from? <laughs> Listen, if I knew that. It has twofold energy. I have to track down that in Plotinus. He's probably doing some some uh, discussion of the Phaedrus. Uh, that's the or the symposium. Or the symposium. I was thinking of or, uh, the horses, the gods, train yeah. of the gods, and coming back. And oh, you were thinking of the symposium about Zeus in the garden. Yeah. Twenty minutes. Drunk on nectar. Yeah. Uh, I don't understand that one. Two fold <laughs> But if uh, inebriated with nectar goes to Zeus in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be all that. It's plenty, plenty in the garden. Plenty in the garden. In Zeus's in garden. Zeus's in garden. Zeus's garden. <laughs> garden. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, that's pretty. But plenty's still a god. So what do you say? So you didn't know what it means. Uh, uh, if you think of it, don't mind that word. It, <laughs> yes, it's... Uh, no, we don't mind. One, one energy... I'm sorry, Dave. Would be this. I take that person. <laughs> One energy would be this act in which intellect knows itself. Okay. As intellect. As intellect. The other. <laughs> it's inebriated with nectar. Now we mustn't. I don't know how to take that. But as <coughs> as yeah as right <coughs> which if you don't know it seems like as if mm -hmm. being as being immortal or more well intellect has two energies or two action actualities two energies S uh, some. Maybe it's being. Yeah. Intellect. As and intellect, being. but others as being inebriated with nectar. Intelligence being, could that mean? Being Yeah, but it's too old. Well, it's explaining the sentence that came before, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you didn't have any trouble with that one, but I did. An intellect possessing life and eternity, always subsisting essentially in energy, always assisting, 
essentially in energy, and fixing all its stable intellect in at once in intellect is entirely deific through the cause prior to itself. Right. Now we're going to talk about the cause prior to itself. And from that cause comes a twofold situation. Oh, I see. Intelligence being. Right. If if uh, some of the energy of intellect is through its own action, then what's left to link up uh, inebriated with nectar would be being entirely deific through a cause prior to itself. Wouldn't that be the link to the next hierarchical lower level? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the link between unity and intellection, he's saying, is twofold. Is one in its own level and one to another level. Well, the next one says... That's how the hierarchy is. Yeah, it says, it is entirely deific through the cause prior to itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. For it has two, it has twofold energies, as Botinus says. Some as intellect. What's it there? That's the, the level above it. So. Right. Okay. So it has twofold energies as prior. Some as intellect, but yeah, others, but others as being inebriated with nectar. Provides the link to itself from the bottom. Is that being with the big B inebriated with nectar? No, I think it's being inebriated. Yeah. <laughs> Not being inebriated. Right. <laughs> well, somehow you're going to. It says, but others as being. Somehow in that, aren't we going to have to get intelligence being there and not just pure intelligence? I mean, well, if Plotinus is talking about it, isn't he saying that it's twofold? Even though it's a unity, it's a twofold nature, intelligence being? Uh, yeah? Yeah. But I think he's saying, now he's talking about two kinds of energies. Huh? Okay. It, One it has kind of energies, energies is as, or, and, I believe that energy also includes this notion of action. Well, Actual why not just say intellect? That it, it's some as intellect. As intellect, it has one sort of energy. But right. as being inebriated by nectar, it has another sort. Now, is that, that must be a metaphor. And I'm saying it seemed to me that uh, inebriated by nectar may be a metaphor for a being in entirely deific through the prior, cause prior to itself. Really, we, uh, this apparently comes from Plotinus someplace, and it would be good to track down the quote in Plotinus, which I haven't done. Mm -hmm. uh, nectar means oh. to me that it's a positive thing to be inebriated this way, not a negative. The word means deathless, doesn't it? I think you'd have to read the rest of the paragraph. Yeah, let's go yeah. on. Wait a while. And elsewhere, oh, you were reading? Go ahead. And elsewhere, he's always carrying on the same point with the end. Mm -hmm. And elsewhere, he observed that the, uh, and elsewhere, he observes that this intellect, by that which is prior to itself and is not intellect, is a god. In the same manner as soul, by its summit, which is above soul, is intellect. And as body, by the power which is prior to body, is soul.
Well, it didn't help us with the nectar. Yes, it did. It did? How? Yeah, because what he's saying is so the soul has a division. Uh, um, you have to back to the bottom and make the first the prior phase. Okay. The soul, in self motive, participates with life of a life according to intellect okay. and energizing according to time. Oh, excuse me. Participates with life according to intellect. And energizing according to time possesses a never ceasing energy and an ever vigilant life uh, from its proxim proximity to intellect. Okay, so it has both life and intellect. So we go from soul to life to intellect. And intellect, one step higher, possessing its life in eternity, always subsisting essentially in energy and fixing all its stable intellect at once in intellect is entirely deific through the cause prior to itself. Mm -hmm. For it has twofold energy, as Simon says, some as intellect, but others as being inebriated with nectar. We have another point to back this up. Elsewhere he observes that this intellect by which by that which is prior to itself and is not intellect is a god. <coughs> and in the same manner as soul by the summit which is above soul, is intellect. So he's gone up from soul to intellect to that which is prior to intellect and back down through intellect <coughs> into soul. And, and in, in both going up and going down, he hits on the image of the divinity. Okay. And okay. the divinity is, is going up, he says, it's inebriated by nectar and coming back down, he just states that it, it's not intellect, but prior to intellect, it's the God. So he's saying, so it's that link with the higher, <coughs> which makes intellect inebriated with... Um, intellect is a god by that which is prior to itself. Huh? So it must get the dual nature by that. Mm -hmm. So he's playing with two images. He's playing with the being soul um, intellect. Mm -hmm. And he's playing around with this mythological language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it's like vitality. It's a, the life was vitality. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I, I was a little too dramatic for that. Would that be an <laughs> intellect? The vitality? So it's not, it, it comes from, mm -hmm. essentially, from intellect, yes. Yes. Yeah. Because it says the soul gets its uh, vitality from its proximity to an Mm-hmm. And, uh, So, uh, this intellect is a god by that which is prior to it. Soul is an intellect by that which is prior to it. Body is alive and self-moving. Is it? Uh, is a soul by that which is prior. So, the prior in this series, then, is this unity, and the last thing in the series is body. In fact, rock. The rock that the man's kicking or moving uh, <laughs> is the last thing in the series. And the rock is the primary thing for the empiricist. So, the that empiricists are down. just upside down and backwards from Plato. He's standing on his head. And uh, whenever we encounter the empiricists, mm -hmm. we have to do this argument over again. Because uh, they're going to come at you and say, mm -hmm. and they'll baffle you if you buy their assumptions that rocks are primary. Well, if you course. start from rocks are primary, you're going to be unable to account for the order of the universe and, uh, and explain that statement. Huh? <laughs> rocks are primary, you're going to be unable to account for the order. Because then all you'll have left will be chance. You won't have intellect. Intellect will be merely some epiphenomenon. Yeah, soul comes after rocks. Soul and comes intellect after. would have to be because rocks and soul existed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then unity or or God would have to come after all that. 
Yeah, totally. Platonism in bedrock. Yeah, so everything above, everything above body would be like the harmony. Soul is to the body like the harmony is to a, a guitar, or an epiphenomenon. Uh, this is uh, an aside, <laughs> but uh, the argument in the laws. If you recall, the argument in the laws has been against the impious man who says that there are no gods, and that's why he is doing his act. Now we're getting close to being a, now we've said intellect is a god. And there's a few more steps to the point of saying that the whole universe is full of gods. Therefore, there are gods. That was the first thing to be discussed. That's the conclusion we're heading toward. And I was saying, since we had just discussed this order, that each thing got its, uh, got something from the order above it, uh, and that the unity is prior, and the rock is the last thing. And I was reminding us that this is uh, the reverse order from the way uh, the empiricists approach things. Uh -huh. uh, and so let's uh, let's see. Shall we continue? Because we're getting close to the We got three minutes. We may have to finish it up once we. Okay, we're at all things therefore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All things therefore, as we have said, are suspended from the one through intellect and soul as media. An intellect indeed has form has the form of unity, but soul has the form of intellect, and the body of the world is vital. But everything is conjoined with that which is prior to itself. And of the natures posterior to these, one in a more proximate, 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 but the other in a more remote degree, enjoys that which is divine. And divinity, indeed, is prior to intellect, being primarily carried in an intellectual nature. But intellect is most divine, as being deified prior to other things. And soul is divine so far as it requires an intellectual medium. But the body which participates of, of a soul of this kind, so far as body indeed, is also itself divine, for the illumination of divine light pervades supernally as far as to the last dependencies, yet is not simply divine, but soul, by looking to intellect and living from itself, is primarily divine. Mm -hmm. That ought to be pretty much self-obvious uh, at this point. Uh, So if you want to be divine, turn around. Look. Look at your son. Look. Uh, turn around. Inside. From How do you do that? Turn inside out? <laughs> turn around <laughs> from turn around. pursuing turn those around. things in the <laughs> sense world to seek self-knowledge. To know yourself. And then... The result is divinity. <laughs> Soul, by looking to intellect, is primarily divine. By so, by looking to intellect. Doing that soul is thing. divine. Same, doing that same thing. The soul is doing that. And that's what I meant by right. turnaround. Yeah. If it's not looking to intellect, it's forgetting. And identifying with the body. And suffering. And not the body. And suffering what it's natural for it to suffer. <laughs> what is natural for it to suffer according to its own nature. All right. <laughs> so we finish up uh, this first point next time, starting with my reasoning is also the same. 
Uh, he's going to say that the, he's going to talk about the whole, he's been talking about the whole world. Now the whole world may divided, be divided into spheres, individual spheres. Oh, yeah. And what applies to what applies to the whole is going to apply to spheres. Well, what divides these spheres? In other words, one one of those attributes defines the level of the whole. And therefore, in the heavens and the stars are together with the whole spheres. Oh boy.